Hello, welcome to tutorial video 11. <laughs> 11, I can't believe it. Right, first thing we need to do then is let's save our tutorial 10 code as tutorial 11. And this is all, um, if you go into the description, there's a link there that will take you to all of this code um, in case you wanted to copy it or paste anything from it, etc, etc. And it's also got all the assets that I use like the diamond axe or the, the, the textures, um, even some models of like the axolotl and things like that. They're all there for you. Um, okay, so I wanted to go to the future. Let's go back to the future. Um, mining. Um, it's been a long time coming. Sorry that you've had to wait until like tutorial 11 um, to try this. And I say try, I think I've got, I've, I've got something working <laughs> behind the scenes. Um, in this preparation code. Let's see if we can, um, but it's not finished. So let's just see if we can do some live coding and get something working. Ah, right, let's just fire up the code, and see what's going on. And I remember there was one bug, I think it was to do with when you build some blocks and then the ax kind of goes behind them for, it's supposed to be in front of everything. I'm just gonna press G and do you remember, um, G in, in our old code, it stops generating the terrain um, so that we've got our, I had 65 frames per second just then, so that it's a lot smoother for just um, testing things. Oh right, yeah, the last thing we did was make these amazing trees. <laughs> okay, so what I wanted to test was, uh, the axe is appearing as it should. It doesn't matter how close we get to things, technically speaking, it should be like through that tree, um, but we want the axe to always appear, so we use the always on top um, set to true for the for, for the axe model. Um, however, if I go to build mode and then build some like stone bits, now yeah, the axe model there's some kind of bug, which means the axe is now not on top of of, of these blocks. Um, I think the problem is because what we're doing is, if you remember from um, about five or six episodes ago, um, this wireframe cube that we've got there is like a um, as a, a a projection of where we're going to build or um, indeed um, delete things, destroy things. Um, it's just a wireframe texture with some transparency on, and what happens when we press the left mouse button, um, we duplicate the, um, what do you call it, like the um, a projected, I think we call it, what is it, block build tool entity, I think that's what we call it, the BTE, let's call it that, the build tool entity, it's just a, a, a ghost cube that's just floating there, <laughs> uh, the BTE, we call it, BTE, right, and what we do is we duplicate the BTE, and then just give it the um, block type that we want, be it grass or ruby or whatever that is. Uh, that's ruby, sorry. Uh, soil or stone. There we go. Um, and so by duplicating it, we're copying um, the BTE's position and the size and the cube and the collider, everything like that. So, well, actually, it doesn't have a collider on the BTE, so we, we have to add a collider to that as well. Um, and I think the reason why the axe is going behind is because we're duplicating it. So, instead of duplicating, let's just create a new entity as we would. And all we have to copy really is the BTE position. Right, so we're in our main code, our main module, and there's the BTE, um, the building code. And it's just a cube with the wire texture on. And it's got uh, build distance, yep, thanks to uh, Ethan Rodriguez. Um, oh, here are our stone, grass, soil, and ruby. So all those are, are colors set to these, it's like um, an enumerated type, um, set to these capitalized um, variables. So um, in the build tool, where are we? Ah, in the function build, we've just got a temporary um, variable called E, and that's now going to house an entity that the duplicate function, which is an Asina function, returns. It returns an entity um, and it copies or duplicates 
whatever entity you pass in as an argument. So instead of doing that, let's just comment it out and not delete the line yet. But let's just say, well, E, could you just become an entity? Um, the model type wants to be cube. Um, I could just leave the collider as cube. I might just, put, yeah, I'll just leave it as cube. That's fine. Um, the box collider should just be a cube. But, okay, let's change it. <laughs> let's change it to box. It shouldn't make any difference. However, sometimes it's good to do that, actually. It's good to, to try something that shouldn't be any different. And then if you get a bug, you know that it is different and something's going on. Um, so maybe worth trying things like that. Okay. Um, right. Oh, yes. So then we want to say uh, position equals, spell that correctly, uh, the BTE's position. Um, and yep, we've got our collider. We've got the texture. So by default, it's going to be stone text. Color is block type. I'm sorry, the stone text is monochrome, isn't it? So that when we set the entity's color, that color shines through the, the monochrome and it can become, therefore, any color that we want. And then we've got like a little shake animation on as well, um, which I don't think happens in Minecraft, does it? But um, I think it looks quite, quite good. Okay, um, right. Save that. I should have added this to our to-do list so I can tick it off. Um, what is it? The uh, the draw order bug. The axe isn't being drawn in the order it should do. So we're dropping in from a very high height. Again, I'm going to press G just to turn off the terrain generation while we're testing. And what do I... Oh, yeah. First, I've got to build some things. So F for build mode. I'll come down here. And let's build some things. Oh, and the axe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, it's hard to notice because now everything's behaving as it should. The axe is now not going behind um, our uh, newly built blocks. And we can uh, delete blocks. There we go. Notice, as another kind of bug, our wireframe, when it's over one of the built blocks, because the wireframe block or the BTE block existed beforehand, the newer blocks are kind of being drawn over the top of them, so we're not seeing them. We're also, that, that's kind of happening, what's it called? Um, Z fighting, I think. Um, so we've got this very nasty thing where we've got the wireframe, the BTE cube, in exactly the same position as uh, the terrain um, mesh. And so that's also fighting for position. So we need to sort that out. That out. Basically, we could just change the size of the, the BTE very slightly, um, which is definitely okay now because we're not going to duplicate it. So the um, the box uh, the blocks that we're building wouldn't inherit uh, the, the the different size. And the size only has to be like 0 0.0001 difference, and that will sort out the the Z fighting. Um, anyway, right, what we now want to do is some mining. So we can kind of do mining. We can mine on um, blocks that we've already built, but we want to be able to, again, press the right mouse button and make that terrain move down or, or be deleted. Okay, so I've got an idea. Right, let's just, we're up here. So near future, um, what was that? Um, the the axe draw bug, bug, bug. And now I've just done that so I can put done, <laughs> which is the whole point. So a little bit of mining. Let's let's not put a question mark. Exciting. Let's be confident. Let's go and do that. So we want to do that in. This is in the wrong place. We've got a build function, but we haven't got like a mine function. Um, so in, in, where are we? It should be in input. Yeah, in the input function, um, we've got Ethan's scroll up or scroll down to move uh, the distance of where you're building or mining. Uh, we've got Q and escape for a quick. We've got the G there for turning off the, the generating of the terrain. Um, we've got, um, yeah, here we are. We've got the build function being called when we press the left mouse button. Then when we press the right mouse up, um, we're saying 
destroy whatever um, block or entity that the mouse is pointing at. And if it's got a collider, it can destroy it. Um, otherwise, it won't be destroyed. OK, so what we want to do here is um, our real, real mining of the terrain. OK, now because we're going to add some code in here, really we want to tidy it up and go to a function that, that contains everything. So let's just uh, cut all of that, control X if you're on a Windows key or a Windows machine, or like me, if you're on Apple, that's command X to, to cut. And then I want to say uh, mine, do some mining. So we need to go and write that function up here. And we'll do it underneath build up there. So define uh, mine. Now what we really should do, this should be in its own module, like we did in the last couple of, of, of videos. Um, we should have a module that we kind of import. We can build a class that does all of this building stuff. So it's not in our main program because like now I'm going to add more lines and it means our main program is getting a lot larger and it's a, a lot harder to find things. I might tidy that up in a future video. What we're going to do now or refactor that in a future video, what we're going to do now is uh, just do it in here. <laughs> just to, uh, uh, also because it might not work. <laughs> it might not work. Right, so I need to talk you through what the plan is. So let's go to paint, uh, what's it called? Paint JS? Oh no, I'm too far away from my Wi Fi. Um, let's just put in paint. Did it come up with anything? By paint, paint JS. Yes, we're here, and we're in dark mode. Wonderful. Okay, so the idea is um, that <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to draw. Okay, let's try draw some terrain. So here's some terrain. There we go. Um, here's Vincent looking at us. Wow, this is really good. Okay, there's Vincent. Um, I'm not going to draw the axolotl. Okay, I'll draw the axolotl. Right. <laughs> that is the axolotl. Um, don't axolotl have these like kind of things like that? I don't know. Right, axolotl. And um, this is us. Here we are on the terrain. Now, maybe I should use the mouse. There we go. Okay. And what we want to do, go to another, another color is let's say we're going to mine this guy. I could just fill it in green. What we want to do is get all of the vertices. So that means the corners of, um, wait a minute, let's draw that over here. Let's draw a 3D cube. A 3D cube? <laughs> all cubes are 3D. Or if they're not, tell me in the comments. Okay, so we've got a cube there. And then at the corner of our cube, can you tell how many corners or these are called vertices? And the lines in between each vertex is an edge. Okay, so we've got eight, in other words. So for a cube, we've got eight. Um, and a way to kind of like... I know we visualize this right here, but a way to think about this is we've got a square and then a square. And a square obviously has four corners or four vertices. And so if we've got two squares like that, just all joined up, it's just two times the four corners or four vertices. So we've got eight vertices, eight V. Um, and what we want to do, because we've already combined our subcubes, which no longer really exist, they're moving off to some other part of the terrain to generate that. So we can't use those subcubes. They're they're not 
in the place where, we, where we're trying to do some mining. What we've got instead is a subset, and I can't remember how many um, subcubes that was made up out of, but the subcubes, they're just there for a, a short amount of time, and, and what they're doing is just telling um, Ursina where the verti vertices are being placed, where we want to place them. Then they're moving off, but they're leaving the information there. And then what we do is combine all that data into one model so that we can generate, as we have been doing, an infinite terrain or a very, very large terrain. Um, and it still runs fine doing uh, using this kind of method. We're not really doing it, we're, well, we're not doing it the most efficient way, but this way is fairly easy to code and it, and it works fairly well. Um, so what we have to do now is think about the subset and all of its vertices. We can't, there isn't a cube to move. So what we want to do is when we're mining, whoops, I can't get hold of this uh, tool, what's going on? Oh, there we go. There's a glitch in the matrix. Okay, um, what we want to do is get hold of that cube and then move it down, let's say, to give the illusion that we've um, dug to a deeper level. What we think is happening is that's being like deleted, and so we we and then we are revealing the next layer. But what we can do is just take that cube and move it down. But as I've been saying. We haven't got a cube there. It's just these vertices that are part of a very large um, area, a whole subset of, of, of where these subcubes used to be. So if we're trying to, to move a cube down, actually, we're just moving everything down like that, or we're deleting the whole thing, which isn't what we want. I've just beheaded myself. And I took Vincent's bottom beak off. I'm sorry. Um, Vincent. So... Vertices. Why did I show you about the vertices? Well, what we can do is we could iterate over all the vertices that are in this position. So our BTE, let's say we've got our our floating hover ghost wireframe BTE cube, and it's there. What we can say is, if you're one of these vertices, and you are within this distance, away from the center point or the position of our BTE. If you're one of those vertices, so let's just say we're in the middle of this um, cube there. So what's that distance? It's like, let's just use the x-axis. Um, if we're in the middle of the cube, let's just imagine, and that's one vertex there, that's one vertex there, that distance there is not going to be one, but it's going to be half of a cube, isn't it? So it's going to be within 0.5. Um, so if the vertex is more than the BTE x position minus 0.5 and the vertex is less than um, the x position plus 0.5, then it must be basically one of the vertices that makes up this single cube. Then we can ask those vertices that we've collected, and there are only be eight of them, so we only need to collect eight of them, and then we can say, I don't know, just go to a completely different place. <laughs> I don't think destroy, I don't know how to destroy them. We could just empty it somehow. I'm not sure how to do that. But if we just said zero, 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 it would just move them over to zero, 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 and it kind of like change things. So what we, if we want to make them disappear, we could like make them fly really high or really, really low somewhere. Or we could just, what's probably more efficient, just move them down one, and then it looks like we're digging down. Okay, enough explanation. That Well, that's the plan. <laughs> I love this diagram. <laughs> it looks amazing. Okay, let's go and try that. So, first we need to iterate over all the subsets that we have. So we, we don't know where we are on the terrain, we want to go through all the subsets and check all the vertices um, that they have. Right, so we want to say um, for, and we call it S for subsets, in subsets. So what that will do, it will go through all of our subsets, which is a list, and so let's say we have 10 subsets that start with subset 0, 
and it'll go subset 1, subset 2, all the way up to subset 10, or the 10th subset, which will be index 9. Um, and then what we can do now, because it's just this loop, is looping over all of the subsets, and it will, it will store each subset in this little variable that we're temporarily making here called s. And what we could do is, for example, say subsets position equals nothing. So that'll do it for all of the subsets that we've got um, on our uh, on our terrain so far. Actually, what we want to do is, yeah, we want to just go around this loop for how many subsets we've got. So we want to use range and we want the length of our subset list. And that's how to do that. So now S will not be each subset. S is just going to be a number or an index integer from zero to how many subsets we've got. And it won't include this range function, won't include, let's say the length is 10 subsets. It won't include 10, it will include it right up to nine. So one less, so that's exactly what we need. For example, if we had 10. So now we can say for, and we'll call it v in um, subset s um, dot, we want to get hold of each subset's model. And remember that model is going to be made up of loads of um, cube positions where the subcubes used to be. And we want to get hold of the vertices. There we go. Or the corners that make up that model. Another word for that model is, is mesh. Okay, so we're getting hold of all of these guys in the subset. Now remember, our subset isn't just one cube like this, it's made up of loads of cubes. Um, I can't remember how many subcubes we've got in each one. Now, we're using that s um, variable there in the index position because that just gives us an, a number from zero to how many subsets we've got. And this, therefore, this is now a nested loop. So this inner one is going to go around for all the vertices in this subset. And then when that's finished, the outer loop then says, we'll go on to the next subset. And then again, this line or this inner loop will go around all its vertices of the next subset and so on across all of the subsets that we've got. So what we want to do in this inner loop and this inner iteration is then to ask the question, which I've got on my di diagram, is that vertex close enough to our BTE cubes position, that wireframe cubes position? If it is, then we're going to um, do something with it. I'll probably just move it down for now. Um, okay, so we want to say if... Um, and I'll put this in brackets just in case I need to go over another line, which I think I will. If v dot um, ah, I want to say if the vertex and remember that each vertex is being stored in just a temporary variable here, which I'm calling v, so I can remember what it, that it's a vertex. Just like um, an entity position, I might put dot x, but that won't work. A vertex is three numbers. It's x position, it's y position, it's z position in 3D space. And that's stored like a list. So I want to index x. And so that's going to be the first number. So that's the x position. 1 is going to be the y position. And 2 is going to be the uh, z position. x, y, z. 0, 1, 2. Easy as that. So, so if v, which means x, um, is greater than our BTE, well, it's going to be greater or equal to, I guess, our BTE um, dot x minus 0.5. Um, and um, I'll go on to a new line here. And the x position of the vertex is less or equal to our BTE's position x plus 0.5. So it's x position is like within, 
That doesn't help, does it? <laughs> Me doing that with my hands. I think I've explained this well enough on the diagram. I'll just carry on. Um, now we're going to do the Y position. So it's going to be exactly the same, except we're going to V1. That's the Y position. So that's got to be, um, we'll start with greater or equal to BT is Y um, minus 0.5. So that's kind of like under, going underneath. Um, and then, oh, I was going to go on to Z, but I haven't finished Y, have I? And so the vertex has got to be less or equal to kind of the top of our Y-frame cube. So it's going to be plus 0.5. And the final two, now we've got the hang of it. Let's just copy and paste that. But we need to switch these to the Z position, which is 2. Um, and we need to position, uh, sorry, use the Z, Z position. So I want to go and comment this. Um, is, is the vertex um, close, close enough <laughs> to where we want to mine? Close enough to where we want to mine, i.e., um, our BTE position. And yes, yes it is. So now, remember I wanted to move it down. So what we're doing is getting hold of now, although we're doing one of these at a time, we're going to get hold of all of these that are close enough, uh, fingers crossed, um, to our BTE Y-frame blocks position. And so we want to get hold of the Y component and then move it down by one block unit. So that's easy. We can just get hold of V1, which is the Y. Remember, X will be 0, Y is 1, Z is 2. And we want to say U minus equal 1. So that means go down one. Um, okay, let's just leave a little message for ourselves. We'll say print, um, hi mom, I'm mining. Oh, I need an escape character, don't I? Um, there we go, is that working? <laughs> Um, I think this works. An escape character is just, um, because I've, I've used a single quote, I could have just used double quotes, um, when I'm using this apostrophe, this uh, contractive apostrophe in the, the word I'm, in the pronoun I'm, um, then it, think, it thinks that that is the end of the string. Um, but if I use this escape character, which I think is the backward slash, then it ignores that next character. Is that correct? <laughs> we'll see if that works. So, um, what I also want to do... No, I'll, I'll leave that. That should just work. <laughs> or have some effect. Uh, this is definitely not the finished product, but let's uh, just have a look. Our code is running. At least we're running. G to stop uh, building the terrain. Okay, turn build mode on. Um, we can build stuff, and we can delete stuff, and it says hi, Mom. Yeah, you can see uh, down there on my console, it's saying the, the hi, Mom, I'm, I'm mining. Which means there were some vertices close enough to this cube. Yeah, actually, if you think about it, because this, the, the BT cube now is on top of the terrain, there are at least four vertices that are within that are close enough, i.e. the 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 um, terrain blocks that are just underneath it. Those top vertices are in exactly the same position as the bottom four vertices of our cube of our BT cube. So we are mining, but we can't see the terrain changing. Let's just try here. So. 
let's close down there. So we're definitely mining. And if I'm, I'm scrolling up now, you can't really see that, but I'll try and scroll down. We've got a lot of messages. So we were doing some mining, i.e. if we're printing out this debug line. Oh, and by the way, the escape character worked. That's good. <laughs> um, if we're down here, that means we're going through all of the subsets on our terrain, going through all the vertices. That's eight vertices per cube position. And we are finding vertices that are contained within that area. And then we're printing that. But nothing's happening. But we're definitely getting hold of the, those affected vertices and we're moving it down. So the reason why nothing's happening is because we're changing the vertex, but we're not actually changing the mesh and therefore the model. We're not saying, could you regenerate yourself according to the new position of your vertices? Because we're, gonna, we're kind of going, or we are going behind the scenes, we're going in depth into what makes up a model. Namely, we're talking about the vertices. And vertices, by the way, um, are what make up triangles. You get three vert vertices in a row, and we know that they're going to be joined up as a triangle. And that's what makes up 3D shapes and things, typically, in computer graphics. So what we want to do now is say, um, I'll just do that before the debug line. Um, we want to not do it here, actually. We should do it after we've gone through all the vertices. We should then, so I've just gone back one uh, tab, and we should then say, um, where are we? Subsets S model uh, generate. I think that's what I need, model generate. We've probably got that up on the Asina cheat sheet on the asinaengine.org website, which tells you how to do everything, or most things. Um, what am I actually looking for? I'm looking for model. Um, is it in mesh? Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, we want this function generate. Call this after setting some of the variables to update it. So we've changed some of the variables of our mesh, of our model, i.e. the vertices. So, yeah, then we need to generate. Right. Let's now, so we've just added that one line, and that's just to tell our subsets, or the affected subsets, could you regenerate? Um, okay, so build mode. Now let's try that again when we go actually on top of the, the terrain. And it's now frozen. <laughs> I think I've basically placed that. Um, I've placed that um, generate function in the wrong place. So let's see if I can force quit out of Python. I crashed it. Oh, I didn't. Um, I didn't manage to crash it when I was uh, preparing this, <laughs> but I've now crashed it. So I placed this in the wrong place. Let's see if I can work it out live. Um, oh, so I'm still within this loop, aren't I? I need to go back. Oh, I was still within the if um, code block. I needed to go at least there. Let's see if that's uh, correct. And actually, we'll we'll move back our mining um, console log. Okay, right. Build mode. <laughs> Try and do one on top of the terrain. Ah, there we go. Look at that. As if by magic, we've deformed the terrain. If I do it again, it goes even lower. <laughs> so we are now technically mining. Um, if you like this effect, by the way, where it kind of like warps the vertices, then um, build that in as a feature maybe, or, or, or at least now you can see what's happening. 
So we've got a problem. We don't want to leave it like this. Um, what's basically happening? Can you see what's happening? Maybe pause the video if you want to think about it and guess. <laughs> and then I'll pretend you're back now. So spoiler alert. What's happening is, um, in fact, let me come off uh, for a moment and go back to, where's the amazing diagram? Here it is. What's happening is, uh, when we're testing to see what vertices are within this area, it's not just grabbing this one cube, but if you think about it, neighbouring cubes, their vertices, all the cubes that are kind of joined up there, they're going to share their positions. So there's going to be more than eight vertices. And so it's dragging all the kind of, a pair of vertices from neighbouring cubes down. So that's what's creating this horrible, like, warped effect. So... I came up with a solution in my preparation, and I think it worked. Um, so what we could do is, I thought, well, what if we made every single cube on the terrain, every subcube, which provides the original positions of, for our vertices, what if we make them slightly smaller? And then, um, And then we can change this to less than and not equal to. And then it should only scoop up the eight vertices that we actually want to move. And what we could also do is start the counter um, and also say we only want eight vertices. So we could say v count equals zero. So every time we're checking um, vertices, if it is in position, we're going to say v count um, increment by one plus equal one. So that's v count equals v count plus one. Um, actually, we should do the action first. And then we can say if v count um, equals eight. So if we've done eight of them, then break. And that will just break out of these loops. It will break. Okay. Um, will it just break out the middle? It might just. So what we maybe let's just put this V count here at the very start of looking through all the subsets, um, and then say break. And now that we're back into make sure I'm in the right position now. Now we're in the original loop and we can say if v count because we can now refer to v count because it exists in the our, in our original loop um, equals eight and then we'll say the same thing break. Um, I may be wrong there it may just break out of all of the loops. That's a good question. Maybe help me out in the comments do some research or if you already know if you're in a nested um, loop, if you break out of the center one, does that also break you out of the, the larger one? I don't think it does, so I'd need to do this kind of thing. So we break out of there, and then we check again, break out of there. Um, or actually, what I really need to do there is continue. No. I don't. Okay, so, 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 what was I doing? Right, so when we build our subcubes, so this is like, video one or two, um, I think actually the first video, part one, when we are creating our subsets. Oh, I've gone too far. When I was talking, I probably went over it. There we go. So instantiate our ghost subset cubes. Um, yeah, we're like rotating them and disabling them. We're adding them to the subcubes list. We're putting a texture on them. What we also want to do is say, buddy, your scale um, is going to be scaled down to 0.999 of yourself. Or actually, I'll just put 0.9. And then you can actually see if they're, or we can see, if they if they're shrunk. Yes. So now we've got smaller um, cubes. 
which looks kind of cool. Again, if you like this look or you think, ah, oh, I could develop this to, to do something else, um, use it and you're welcome. But now let's just test out our system. Oh yeah, a bonus is that we can see our um, BTE wireframe cube, it now fits over the top <laughs> of our cubes, which is really cool. Anyway, let's see if we can uh, do some mining. So I've selected that guy, right click. Oh, <laughs> that was disappointing. It didn't work. I've got my hi mum, hi mum, hi mum. Actually, there are only four. Oh. That was weird. When I was on top of the terrain. Hey, my terrain's actually, oh no, sorry. I got distracted. I thought my terrain was um, in the wrong place for a second. So something's going wrong. When I'm on top of them, then they, or sometimes they shrink. They, uh, not shrink, they go down. I think I just accidentally killed a tree. Okay. Let's, uh, so now that we don't, we don't want to see the gaps, and I'm a bit confused why it wasn't working. <laughs> I'll check uh, with my prepared code, which was working. Um, so we'll go to 999, kind of percent of itself. So this should look pretty much identical to what we had originally. Okay, you can see a slight join between our vertices. So let's add another one. So tenth, a hundredth, a thousandth, a ten thousandth difference. Which shouldn't make a difference for our eye compared to the original version, but makes all the difference for our little algorithm there. Okay, so I can see a little bit of tearing, so again we might add another one. Um, but this looks fine, so build mode. Let's try selecting something. Okay, it's only finding three vertices, and then it's stopping. So let's come out of there. Let's go back to my code. Oh, I'll put another nine on there <laughs> while I'm here. And let's take out this second break. and just see if that does the trick. If it doesn't, what I'll do is look at the code. I might even pause the video so it's a bit shorter for yourself. Um, although, is it fun sometimes to watch debugging? Because it kind of, I know when I'm watching coding videos, it really helps me when I'm watching people debug. Anyway, oh, so it's too tight actually. I need to take off that nine. And, oh, something's happening there. Some of the vertices are being removed. Right. Let's, I'm going to pause the video, um, sort this out, and then I'll be right back. See you in a moment. Okay, welcome back. That was about 30 seconds. Uh, I just had a look at my, my previous code, my prepare code. I can see one difference. Let's just see if that makes the difference. So, have I taken off the nine? I think, I think I've taken off enough nines. Right, um, just so that our, well, I guess we could make the, the BTE cube slightly bigger and therefore our terrain nicer. Let's try that. So nine, 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 nine. And our BTE cube, that's right at the top, isn't it? We've build stuff. Or close to the top. There it is. It's a cube, so its scale um, 
equals, well at the moment it's 1, I think, so I'll put 1.01, that should make it slightly bigger, and that doesn't matter now, remember, because we're not duplicating it when we're building, we are actually creating our own cube, and we're just copying the BTE position, so that should be fine, and now here we are, um, attempting to mine, and the only thing I did differently in my code was to generate, I'll take out the mining console log. I did this generation um, here, which doesn't seem very efficient. It doesn't seem the correct thing to do. Let's just have a look. So this is my code. So I increase the vertex count break there and then generate and that's pretty bad isn't it because um, if we're breaking there then we're not actually doing that line anyway I think we generate and then and was it the model subsets model not the mesh or anything okay right and have I used the same dimensions? Yeah, minus five. Oh, and equal to. That's a big difference. That is a big difference. Anyway, let's try this first and let's see what difference makes the difference. Okay. I'm glad I've got this on camera actually, the debugging, that kind of thing. Oh, put build mode on, and then again I've hit, let's put a bit more, let's go over here, let's make some more terrain, go into the forest. And now I'll switch off, okay, right, build some rubies, can I delete the ruby? Yep, so we can delete things in the same way, right, let's try and mine through this shade. Can I use Ethan's? Yes, there we go. Oh, okay, so <laughs> it's just taken off like four vertices. That's really strange. Okay. So, um, let's just try this. So I put in my prepare code that there. That doesn't make sense to me. This should make things worse, if anything. Good news, well, if, if I know what I'm now talking about, um, compared to my past self made it work very, very quickly. Probably because I wasn't on camera. Um, but maybe my future so i.e. me now I've improved the efficiency of the mining because I've put the uh, the generate function in the correct place but maybe the parameters need to be different for the area where we're measuring where the vertices are anyway let's try and mine that oh that almost <laughs> this is really weird behavior I don't know what it's doing Okay, so that wasn't a problem, putting it there. I'm gonna, right, let's move this back to where I think it should go. Let's just think about this. So if our V count is zero at the very start of our all, all of our loops, and we're only looking for eight of them, aren't we? Then if we've actually found one and we've moved it, we then want to increase our V count, which we're doing. If we've moved eight, then we break. That makes sense. Um, we want to, yeah, be in here. We want to, yeah, be in our outer loop then, there. Oh, sorry, there. Now we want to say current subset regenerate. 
Um, you know what? It will only be able to collect eight. If our algorithm is working correctly, it can only collect eight. So what we want to do is take all this v-count stuff out and have faith in our system. Also, that won't break us out in unexpected ways. And then I want to change this to what I had in my prepare code. Oh yes, because the neighboring cube has to be more than 0.5 away because it's smaller than one. Okay. So that all looks fine. <laughs> I'm even, even gonna have some tea. I press G, I'll have a bit more, let's have a bit more terrain over here. Let's go near the axolotl for, um, for moral support. Oh, now I see the face of an axolotl. It's got its f fans, or its fan, above and at the side of its head. So I kind of drew it okay. Right, um, stop generating the code. We've got Vincent looking as well. In front of the axolotl, <gasps> right click. <gasps> I think we just mined. Let's try another one. Can I do it again? Right, I need to be able to go down now. <laughs> Oh, we're, we're mining, we're mining. So, um, what about, can I mine there? Yes, we've got real mining happening. And there. Yes. <laughs> oh, Ethan Rodriguez is scrolling up and down. Um, really comes in handy here. Right, mine, and now scroll down, mine, scroll down. Okay, that's a little tricky. Right. <laughs> Whoops, I just built something. Mine. Lovely. So we're mining. Now, a problem that we've got is... Um, I can kind of see it working here. There we go. So two, two issues. One is really a problem is that the ghost terrain is still there. Remember, we're using the Perlin noise independently of what we've done here. So what we need to just do is say, like we've done with the caves over here, is basically use that dictionary system that we've already got ready and just say we've moved the, the terrain because we've done it here and then, and look, we absolutely fall down, we move. So we've just got to do that for these guys. Oh, this is quite handy. We can have a look at those terrains uh, blocks that we've moved down. Lovely. Okay, it's beginning to work. Um, the second thing that we need to do, let's go and add this to a list. <gasps> we've done the mining. Uh, if I just put ba very basic mining is working, although we've done all the difficult stuff, the really technical vertex stuff behind the scenes we've done and we're almost on an hour. And what I want to do is just before this hour, so seven minutes, six minutes, five minutes, is just be able to move down to, to where we've mined two. So let's just open up our cave system module. There it is, cave system. So we've got a cave dictionary, and yeah, at these locations, we want to we want to set the height of the cave. Because what we're doing at the moment is we're checking if a cave is at a certain position. But what we want to do is, yeah, check if there's a cave there. And then in here, we want to say the, the height of the cave. So if I now go to, is it Perlin noise in here? Generate. 
Yeah, so I'm in generate Perlin noise. And so what we've passed in is an X and Z position. And oh, and this is what our um, scrolling down to our gravity system or in generate shell. Yeah, we're also going, what is the y position of the terrain at this at this position? And we call that same function generate terrain and we we pass in our subject or our player's x and z position, uh, plus two for our height. <laughs> um, so it's so that's calling this um, Perlin function, uh, generate Perlin. And this is the important bit. So Anoush is our cave system. So it uses that check cave function, which we were just looking at. And then if it's true, i.e. there's a cave there, then it moves us down by nine. So we don't want to do that. We want to return um, we want check cave to return a number. So we want to say if you um, don't equal none, then um, y minus equals a new check cave x z. Which is kind of bad. <laughs> because um, we're calling that function twice when we only really need to call it once. However, we are doing this plant tree thing here. So let's just keep it like this and we can get it basic, get it working and then refactor. Unless you see an obvious solution, which I don't right now, okay, I should do. It should be very easy. Um, so what we need this to do is to return Oh, it already does return, sorry. It returns, where's check cave? Oh, it, do, it does return true or false. So what I need you to do is, um, okay, let's just try, <laughs> let's just try this. Return a temporary string. So a temporary string is the value that our dictionary key has stored. And we want to change this to not a string now, but a number. And we were at minus nine. So these guys want to be minus nine. what I'm thinking, yeah, what I'm thinking is that when we've mined, we need to set the cave, um, <sighs> the <laughs> we need to set our uh, dictionary, a dictionary, sorry, we need to enter into our cave system dictionary a new key at the position that we're at and at the current height that we want that terrain to be. So in fact while we're here in our terrain system we need a new um, uh, make cave. Wait a minute. So that's building all the caves. So we want to do a very similar thing to this but we can't just put hard code in the position. We don't know what position we're going to be at. So we want to um, pass in the position here. And then hopefully this code builds the uh, the key for us, the dictionary key. So we want to, actually I'll use temp string again, <laughs> because it's a different function, so it's a completely different variable, temporary variable, equals that lovely thing there. I'm gonna, I also copied the brackets just so that we can go to a different line 
there we go so that creates this little bit based on whatever x and z we've passed in converts it to a string uses an integer so we've got just that single number if you remember from a previous bug when we first created this and then we want to create um, a new entry in our dictionary. How do I do that? Do I just say this cave dictionary? I think I just do that. Is it square brackets afterwards? And I just say temp string equals um, oh, and now we need the height. I'll call it um, yeah, I'll just call it height simplicity. There we go. Um, and that should store that value at this key, uh, dictionary key location. Right. Okay, so we've got that set up. So we're going to use that when we mine, use our mine system. Oh, we've gone over the hour. Um, what we were doing first, so we're checking the cave and we just want to get whatever height is at that key uh, location. So um, I can do, I can close down my preparation code. I've, I've, as you can probably tell, I've gone beyond the preparation code. Now we're just live coding the first time. Right. Um, so where are we? So we're back in the generate Perlin. So we're actually saying if a noosh check cave doesn't equal none, because if we haven't made a cave there, we've not done any mining, there won't be a, a dictionary key there. So it'll just be none. So we're then going to say why. So that's the return value of um, the generate Perlin function which is used by the subject, the player, when they're walking around. So this is basically going to be the, the player's height, the subject's walking height. Um, equals, we just want to say what is, oh no, sorry, we've got Perlin noise there. No, we just want to say equals, equals, um, yeah, check cave. there so can i just do that once can i let's try, let's try and be good so we just want to say um uh what cave height equals that and then we can say if what cave height doesn't equal none then c just sorry y equals what cave height we want and we've gathered that from the check cave function here so check cave returns whatever value height we've got so our original cave should be minus nine which was doing exactly what this function was originally doing because we just said if there's a cave there decrease our height by nine so that should be oh it shouldn't be exactly sorry yeah it's not doing it there is it it's slightly different now we're setting them all to kind of minus nine anyway um that's okay um this should really work with our um our mining system anyway right so our mining system and our cave system is kind of like overlapping um, because they both involve holes in the terrain. Um, else if, so I think our tree system still works, is that right? As long as we haven't mined somewhere, we can plant a tree. I think that's still okay. Um, right, and the final thing we just needed to do is, yeah, when we're mining, we need to go and use, um, we, there we go. Um, we need to set the height 
to Mm, ah, so this is a little more difficult. Because we're grabbing hold of eight vertices, we're going to get all of them. Right, so we want, we kind of want the average position of them. Okay. <laughs> right, let's try and do that. So, we want to say um, total y equals zero at the moment. And then we're going to say total y plus equal v1. So every time we find a vertex, so eight of them, we want to add its height to this total y thing. Um, and then at the end, before we, when we generate the model, we're going to say if total Y um, I was going to say, right, the problem is now, I was going to say, well, if it's greater than zero, but we've, um, okay. <laughs> But that's to do with height, so it might be zero, right? So we just want um, v v change equals false. Okay, <laughs> v change equals false. If we have changed something, then v change equals true. So if v change equals true, then um, total y equals total y divided by 8. So that gives us our average height, which should be our mean height, which should be the position that we actually want. <laughs> and we'll floor that. Do we want to floor that? Okay, we'll floor that. To give us our Minecrafty kind of thing. Oh, that's going to be flawed later on. Okay, we'll leave it flawed now. And then we'll say, now we want to get hold of Anoush, which is our cave system. Um, and we want to use make cave. And we just need to pass in the x, the z, and the height. Okay. I've just had another idea, <laughs> which made this a lot simpler. Anoush, um, what's it called? Make cave. Make cave, and we want to pass in the x position. So we could just get hold of our um, BTE x, our BTE z. Remember, that's our wireframe. So this was the position that we're trying to mine at. So we've already got that position. And I could have just said, the BTE Y, couldn't I? Minus one. Instead of doing the whole average height thing. Let's try the average height thing. <laughs> Since I've made it. Total uh, Y. <laughs> there we go. Right. We need to comment some of this. Um, record change of record change of height in cave dictionary um i'm kind of um record or oh, note that we have made change 
gather average height for cave dictionary. Right, so just a little explanation of what these variables are doing. So then when we look at this on part 219, we'll know on earth what we were doing back here. And presumably we'll be better coders, better programmers in the future. And so we'll see this and we'll be able to um, refactor it efficiently. Okay, right. <sighs> Let's see if all of that kind of works together and we can kind of walk down into the cave that we've mined. Oh yes, the well, I was still in the cave system. The other issue was if we're just moving a single a single cube down, I missed out. Well done if you spotted that. 300 points to you. Um, equals equals. I'm not trying to assign true to that variable. I'm, I'm saying is v change the same as true? So I need two equal signs. Um, and I've done it here as well, haven't I? Oh no, <laughs> I've done it in the wrong place. I am trying to say vchange is true there, and I'm saying is vchange true there. Okay, um, what was I saying? Okay, if we move one block down, we then need to like generate like the walls of the terrain. What have I done there? Total y equals floor total y. Oh, yeah, sorry, that's not a, uh, a question or a or a function. I don't know why I put the code on there. It's because I'm getting tired now and there was a an if statement and a, a tab there. <laughs> I really hope this works. <laughs> I have no idea if it will. Everything looks okay. Well, I suppose it does, doesn't it? Everything kind of looks okay when you try to run it. Um, so G will stop generating the terrain to test. Because I'm saying that because we're I'm running out of time here, right? So right click, it's moved down. I can't remember what's supposed to be happening. Oh, I'm supposed to be able to walk on that. So let's lower all of these guys and just see if I can. <laughs> well, good news is the terrain dictionary must be working. Something was happening there. Bad news is, um, the bad news is that this averaging of the height, not working, was it? Right, so let's just, instead of using total y, let's just use our blocks position minus one. Uh, our block, I mean our BTE, our block tool entity thing. Uh, wireframe thing because remember that is in the position at the height that we're mining at but it needs to be one lower so hence minus one right oh uh, yeah okay so I can still mine um, Sorry, I'm struggling. I need to definitely change the controls a little bit. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm being very slow. I'm not meaning to be. But I'm just trying to do that. Right. And we just what? <laughs> to someone, let's imagine someone's just walked into the room and is just watching this. They're just like, what, you're just walking on some grass? That's <laughs> that's amazing. It's actually worked. Wow. So <laughs> there we go. Yes. Oh, that's brilliant. So we've got a fully working kind of like mining system. So what I need to do next time, I'll add this to our to-do list. Yes. Is we need to kind of like generate. So there where we've got a gap, we just need to generate a, a cube there where I'm kind of um, pointing now with the wireframe um, and I suppose we've already got a system what if we also want to kind of like build one around the corner but there's already a block there maybe we've done some building there or a cave nearby well we've already got a system that checks if a cube already exists somewhere um, so we can 
we can just test to see if something's already there. And um, not build another cube there. That's what I was just trying to say. Okay, right. Thank you very much for watching this one. And we did it. <laughs> we can actually do some mining now. Uh, see you next time. Goodbye.